Hey there, this is Stan, K9SWX, and today we're going to review the Sanjin HDR14 AM, FM, and HD portable radio. So here's the radio, and as you can see, it easily fits in, a, in your hand, so it makes it very portable. But we'll just go through a few things. These are the preset numbers. There's 20 total presets for each band, and you can use this page button to switch between... Uh, the different memory banks. Um, this is your band. This would be AM, FM. This is an info button, which also doubles as a menu button if you hold it down. You've also got uh, HD Seek, which will scan for all HD stations in your area. And APS will actually store those in to these presets automatically. And then the page just switches between the different presets. So you'd have like one, two, three, four, five, and then you hit page and you get another set. That'd be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, you know, there's not much to this radio. Um, you've got the telescoping antenna on top. Uh, on the bottom, you've got this little neat foot thing that slides out and then you can sit it on a desk. Uh, on the right side of the radio, you can lock it, so if you've got it in a bag or a case or something, uh, you're not going to accidentally turn on the, the radio. And then on the left side, you've got the volume control, uh, headphone jack, and this is the uh, power jack. Uh, it does come with the AC adapter, which is kind of nice, uh, but I just use it on batteries. It runs on uh, three three double-a batteries and I've got them uh, I've got rechargeables in here so they last for quite a while so now one of the main reasons for buying this radio is that it picks up HD radio signals and the easiest way to find a station in your area is to go to hdradio.com slash stations and as you can see in my area I've got basically four different stations that broadcast an HD signal. So we've got our public radio like PBS type station which has three substations so they've got their their main HD channel and then they've got another channel that plays different music and then they've got a I guess it'd be a translator type deal to their AM station on the HD3 and then we've got uh, another station uh, WREE which is it just plays their main, that's all they have is their, basically a copy of their FM station. And then uh, we've got WLRW, which does their main programming. And then they have an oldie station. And then finally there's uh, Wixie, uh, which has three substations. They got their main country station. Then they've got a hip hop st uh, station. And then a top 40. So that's that's pretty cool that they can, in one signal, They've got three different genres of music going, which is pretty cool. So let's turn this thing on here and see if we can get any of the HD stations to come in here. Um, I know that one doesn't come in very well. Let me do... Where is it here? Here's WLRW. Now you can see it immediately jumps into HD. That means it's trying to find the HD signal. And there it is. It says HD1 which is their main channel. And I can't, I can't play the audio for copyright reasons. Um, but if we hit the up arrow, it'll take us to HD2, which is their oldies channel. So you can see it's playing uh, Rolling Stones. Looks like it's I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Uh, so that's pretty cool that it shows you um, the HD channel and uh, the song and the artist. So you peer oldies. So there's that. Um, I don't think I can get the other station in here. Well, let me try 92.5. I don't have the antenna up here. Let me try that and see. See what we get here. Okay, it is it is trying there. W R E E H D. There it is. H D one, and as we saw before, that was their only uh, their only H D channel. So. It's just a copy of their FM, but that's pretty cool. It shows you what's playing. And then, uh, I don't believe I can get the 
PBS station, but we'll try it here. Well, maybe we can. This is W I L L, and it's searching. Still searching. Oh. Oh, no, it's playing music, so I can't turn the audio up. Um, yeah, I'm just, see, I'm in the corner of this room, and it doesn't pick up very well. Let me, whoops, let me try to move the antenna a bit. There we go. So we've got HD1, and the, the plus just means there's another channel. So there's HD2, which is, um, it's another, They both of them play classical music, but usually it's two different songs at the same time. And then HD3 is their um, AM 580 rebroadcast. Yes. So lo and behold, I, I get the pizzeria. But there you go there. it's It sounds a lot better on HD3. H, I can't even say it. HD3 than it does if I switched um, to the AM band and hear all the static and all that stuff. So that is kind of a nice feature of a station that, uh, has AM and FM. Usually, they'll put their AM station on the H, one of their HD channels, and it'll, and it'll sound a heck of a lot better. Another thing I want to talk about is the RDS or the Radio Data System. That's the information that shows you the artist, the title, the call letters of the station, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, if we turn this thing back on, I'll pull up a station here, and you'll see the RDS. That means it's receiving an RDS signal, and then you'll start seeing, okay, there's the artist, and there's the call sign over here, and then there's the name of the song. It's like Beautiful Mistakes by Maroon 5. Okay, so if you hit Info, it says, well, this is a soft rock station. You hit it again, it gives you the time, and then you hit it again, there's the date. And we're in mono because, well, we've only got one speaker. We're not hooked up to headphones. And then there's our signal strength. So this is a pretty, this is a 50,000 watt station. And I'm like three miles from it. So it comes in pretty good. So, um, But most most stations do have RDS. There's, there's a handful that don't. Um, let me see here if I can thumb through some of these. I think this one should... Up here, like this one, it either doesn't have it or it's not strong enough to pick it up. Uh, let's see, this one should have it. I go over here, higher love. That's the name of the song. And some don't give all this other data that other stations do, but. Um, that one's also very strong. And I hope that one's, let's see. This should be, sometimes it'll say it's got an RDS signal, but it doesn't actually, here we go. It just takes a minute. The signal's a little weaker. Um, but that was, um, there we go. Yeah, this is another, this is actually the, um, when we were doing the HD stations, this is HD2 on the WILL HD station. So this 101.1 is technically, I guess, a translator. Um, so I think it runs like 250 watts or something like that. But So for people who don't have an HD radio, they can go to 101.1 and pick up that HD2 signal. So that's pretty cool. So I think RDS is really cool to have in a portable radio, um, especially if the conditions are right. You can really pick up, you know, stations from all over the place, uh, especially when there's uh, either tropo um, propagation or the sporadic E, which, you know, you can get way out there. Um, I have picked up stations um, out in, like, um, I believe it was Utah or Wyoming or somewhere way out west, uh, and I'm in Illinois, so I picked it up on here. I've got an RDS. Um, unfortunately, I didn't wasn't able to record or take a picture of it at the time, but uh, it's pretty cool. 
And I've even picked up uh, St. Louis is about 160 miles or so from us. And I've picked up uh, their, um, I think it was WXOS um, HD, and it was actually decoding an HD signal with the telescopic antenna indoors. So we had quite a opening that day, but that was pretty cool. Baseball at ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Amco sends all right, let's check out the AM reception on this thing and see what it sounds like here. He's got two. <laughs> it was amazing. Like they they have such incredible personality. Oh, but by the way, Bo, are you getting all this, please? <laughs> please tell me you're rolling on all this stuff. <laughs> I have a lot of interference in here, so it's hard to pick some of this stuff up next to the computer. But if you notice, let me go back to our strong station. If I turn this, it has an internal uh, ferrite bar like a lot of AM radios. But if I turn this, you hear how kind of like the bandwidth drops? Like it's auto adjusting the bandwidth based on the signal strength. And so, so there's this scene in Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. <laughs> right there, it sounds more muddy or narrow. And as soon as you switch it over to you turn it a little bit, and he gets full strength. He's still alive. So that's an interesting feature. I would prefer to have more of more control over that, um, but you know it is what it is. Now this is a nice radio, so I want to protect it uh, if I want to throw it in my backpack or something. So I went on Amazon and I found this cool hermit shell travel case, which um, actually works on a number of radios. Um, See a previous video I did on the Sea Crane Skywave radio. Uh, the same case will work on that one as well as the Sanjin HDR14. It's a it's a hard shell case, and it's pretty well padded. And if you put the radio in, uh, one thing to do is put this on lock mode so the power doesn't automatically come on by itself. Put it in there. I put it face down, and I zip it up. And there you go. Uh, it's a pretty solid case. Throw it in your bag and you'll be ready to go wherever you uh, want to listen to it. Um, this is available again on Amazon and at the time of this recording it's uh, $12.99. And I'll put a link to this in the description below. And it is also an affiliate link. So uh, if you do purchase through that link it will I'll get a small commission and, and it helps support the channel. So appreciate that. All right, now that we've seen a few things about the radio what what do I like and don't like about this radio I think the first is just it's very portable uh, it fits in your hand you can throw it in a bag and take it wherever you want to go and have a really solid radio next up would be that it does HD radio and there's not very many portable radios that I've seen uh, that does HD radio and does it well uh, the RDS, the system that shows you the artist and the title and the call sign of the station and all that information, um, that works really well. Um, it locks on quick and it gives you the information and it's a, it's a really solid system. Next up, it uses regular AA batteries, three of them, and you, know, you can get those anywhere. I prefer to use rechargeables because... You know, I can reuse them over and over again. So I just have an extra set. And these die, I'll just uh, pop them out and throw in a new set, and we're ready to go. Now, if you don't want to use batteries, it does. It, they do include the AC power cord, but a word of caution is if you're listening on the AM band, that uh, power cord will introduce some noise, some extra noise to AM, and AM is always are already uh, noisy, so you might want to. Uh, not use the AC cord if you can help it. And finally, um, there's a there's a nice little lock switch uh, on the side there. Um, so when you do throw it in a bag, it'll keep the radio from not turning on. So that'll that'll save your batteries right there. 
So on the other side, what don't I like about the radio? I mean, I guess the first thing would be that the AM bandwidth changes as you, as the signal strength changes. So if, if, you, if the signal gets weaker, the uh, bandwidth gets more narrow and the stronger the signal, it gets wide. I mean, that's kind of nice, but then it'd be nice if they could just put in a little bit of a manual control. So if you wanted to lock it on narrow for everything, that'd be good or put it on wide, but you know, not a big deal. The next thing is you can't actually enter um, the actual frequency manually. You have to like go up and use the up and down arrow, which is fine because you can just store your favorites and as presets, but just wanted to mention you, there's no way to enter it manually. And one, one thing that really frustrates me is that backlight. Um, even when it's plugged in, you, there's no way to keep it on more than a few seconds. Every time you hit a button, it comes on, but then I'd like to just kind of sit it there and have it, have the light on all the time, especially if it's plugged in, you know, it's not, not hurting anything, but there's no way to keep it, keep that backlight on. And finally is the price. It's, uh, as the time of this recording, it's selling for 80 bucks, um, which is if you're just looking for FM, AM, FM radio, you know, 80 bucks is a lot of money. Um, but when you add in the HD part of it, um, you know, it's, it's a decent price, I guess. So where can you buy this cool little radio? Well, the place I found is on Amazon and it's selling for seventy nine ninety eight right now. And I'll put a link in the description below, which uh, is also an affiliate link. So if you do purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, which uh, helps support the channel. So appreciate that. So what did you think of the Sanjin HDR 14 HD FM AM radio? Is it something you'd be interested in picking up? Do you have any questions about the radio? Throw them in the comments below and I will do my best to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and make sure to ding my bell to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again and 73 from K9SWX.